And there are many brands of the lost, so to speak. Many variations, many types. Just as there are many religions. But salvation is of the Lord. So here you see that lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, pride of life. And John refers to it way on the other end of the Bible, saying that that's exactly what you find in the world. Now turn with me to Proverbs for a minute. In chapter 6. In Proverbs 6, let's go down to verse 12. We'll find some very interesting things in the next several verses. The Lord says through his servant Solomon in the Proverbs, Proverbs 6, 12, a naughty person, there are a few of them around, A naughty person, a wicked man, walketh with a froward mouth. They don't walk with their feet, they walk with their mouth. All right? Their words have legs. They get around, don't they? How many sins have been committed with the mouth? In fact, if you look in the book of James, it will tell you the tongue can no man tame. It is unruly. It is full of deadly poison. Remember little Adolf back there in Germany? Did he do any harm with his mouth? He'd stand there before a sea of humanity as far as you could see human heads. And he'd stand there and he'd put his arm up like Obama does. Did you ever see him do that? The Hitlerian salute? He does it all the time. Why? The spirits that are in him, and you find these spirits in other leaders also, were at one time back there in the Third Reich. And Hitler would open his mouth and say, The Dritte Reich wird ein tausend Jahren dauern! Did you ever hear any of his speeches? Third Reich will last a thousand years! It didn't. Made it 13, and then... Interesting number, 13, right? Down it went. But you know, Hitler took lessons. He learned how to talk with his hands. If you ever watched him on a, a newsreel, he wouldn't just stand there and talk. He'd make a point and he'd go like this. Like that. All the time, he'd talk with his hands. He also signaled with his hands. See, in the, the Illuminists have a certain sign language. One of the things they do is that El Carnuno, those two horns with a hand, you've seen that. Why is it that you have religious singers doing that? Why are ministers doing that? Why are youth leaders doing that? Why did George Bush do that? Why did Bill Clinton do that? Why does Hillary do that? All these people. Why? Well, it's satanic. They're all of the same spirit. Watch what the Word of God says. A naughty person, a wicked man, walketh with a froward mouth. He winketh with his eyes. He speaketh with his feet. He teacheth with his fingers. Hmm. That's how they make their point. That Satan is very demonstrative. Frowardness is in his heart. He deviseth mischief continually. He soweth discord. There are still these people that think that they can become great by putting other people down. And I've noticed that there are those that, when they're mad at you, they'll build up a big case against you, try to make you look little, try to make you look wrong, and try to make you look stupid. That makes them look better. That's the work of Satan. Have you ever seen Satan at work? He's the accuser. When you hear people accusing people of other things, that's the devil. Come on. All these accusations. I'm talking about among Christians. That is the, the work of Satan himself. And we need to be able to identify that as Christians, right? We should know that. We should know his devices and know when he is working. Frowardness is in his heart. He deviseth mischief continually. He soweth discord. Therefore, shall his calamity come suddenly. Suddenly shall he be broken without 
remedy. Now he identifies some things. Now watch this carefully. And I'm getting closer and closer to where I'm going to tell you what the strangest secret is. In verse 16 it says, These six things doth the Lord hate. Now if there's six, if there's six things the Lord hates, I want to know what they are, don't you? Because we want to avoid those things. These six things doth the Lord hate, yea, seven are an abomination unto him. Abomination. So terrible, so reprehensible, so evil, that they are abominable to God. I certainly want to know what they are, and I never want to be involved in any of them. A proud look is the first one. A proud look. Have you ever seen a proud look on people? Usually their nose goes up in the air a little bit. Hmm. Did you ever see that? Did you ever see pride? The manifestation, the appearance of pride, it's an ugly, ugly, ugly thing. It's Satan himself getting into people. People accomplish things, they want to get a trophy for it, they want recognition, they want to be all over the news, look what I did! And in a big scheme of things, what, is, what difference does it make? Who cares who wins the Super Bowl? Who cares who wins the, the, these, I don't even know the names of them all, they've got trophies for this and trophies for that, all kinds of recognition. There's one thing people don't need, it's recognition. Hmm. A proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood. Now, what could be more, what blood could be more innocent than the blood of unborn babies? Children being ripped from the womb, suctioned out broken up in a womb, torn out. Medical doctors take their Hippocratic oath was a hypocritical oath. And to, to abort these children. You know, God has the last say. I'll tell you that right now. And that's why I still marvel at this plane crash over there in, in uh, near Butte, Montana. Remember a couple weeks ago, was it? Well, earlier this month, 14 people went down in a turboprop plane that came crashing to the ground. You've heard about that in the news, I'm sure. And of course, on board that plane were a couple of medical doctors and the entire family of a doctor, Irving Feldkamp. And Dr. Feldkamp was a multi, 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 multi millionaire many times over because he owned, he bought and owned the largest chain of abortion clinics in the United States. He was filthy rich with the blood money of butchered babies. That's how he made his money, by killing babies. This big abortion clinic chain all over the country and he would, they would abort babies up to five months old. Kill them, kill them, kill them, kill them, kill them. And now his entire family was in this plane, flying over Montana near Butte, and suddenly, for no reason at all, it came crashing down and smashed into a cemetery. And in that cemetery, the cemetery was unique and different from all the other cemeteries because in that cemetery, some concerned people, anti-abortion, pro-life people, had put up a headstone, a big monument there, called the Tomb of the Unborn. And it was right there that that plane crashed and God said, it's enough. It's enough. 